402. Welcome everybody. And I move through things since it's the holiday season and everybody's super busy. Um, so, uh, Bob, you're good at leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Sure, I'm going to start with roll call. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank roll you. call. I always skip that. <laughs> thank you, Stacey. Uh, Board Member Walker. Here. Board Member Tiffany. Board Member Meg Williams. Here. Board Member Johnson. Here. Board Member Fuentes. Board Member Duff. Here. Board Member Dement. Board Member Darby. Board Member Blackman. Here. Here Castanos. Here. All right. So. That's your own. Yeah. Um, okay. Yep. Six of us. Okay. Great. Thank you for being here. And um, Bob will lead us in the pledge. Ready? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, and in the city of liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Bob. Okay, are there any additions or deletions to the agenda? None from staff. Oh, good. Hi, Christian. Yep. Hearing no additions, or do we have any public comments? No public comments at this moment. Thank you. Any conflict disclosures from anybody on the board on items on the agenda? Hearing none, we can move right into current business. Um, so we'll start off with approval of the minutes for the uh, November 16th uh, CPOB meeting. Any comments or changes, adjustments to that, to those meeting minutes? And hearing none, uh, can I get somebody to move to approve? I move to approve the minutes. I have a second. I will second. Seconds it, thank you. Stacy will take roll. Board member Walkup, how do you vote? Yes. Board member Meg Williams, how do you vote? Yes. Board member Johnson, how do you vote? Yes. Board member Dub, how do you vote? Yes. Board member Demint, how do you vote? Yes. Board member, Bergman, how do you vote? No, but they don't have a is that one? Yeah. Okay. Board member Blackman, how do you vote? Yes. Chair Castanos, how do you vote? Yes. Oh. Oh, it passes. Okay. <laughs> seven. Seven was I voted yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, Mesa Police Department updates by Chief Sweeney. Thank you, Chair. Board members, it's good to see everybody. Uh, a couple things I wanted to go over is our staffing. Obviously, we go over that every single time. Uh, currently, right now, we have two police officers that are in the academy. So they're scheduled to graduate in February. Uh, we have five vacant police officer positions still open. Uh, we have four currently in field training. So they're all doing well. We have one dispatcher vacancy. We did have one community service officer vacancy, but this morning I offered a full-time position to our community service officer, Shaquan Matthews Blue. So he was in our academy and he came out and now he's going to be a full-time community service officer here at La Mesa. So he accepted that position this morning. Great. Uh, we were fortunate to have uh, officer Alma Villarreal. She completed her field training. So she probably saw our Facebook and Instagram post on that. So she's out on her own doing extremely well. Uh, we also had uh, sergeant's promotions, which I think you all knew we were testing. So I recently promoted three sergeants. They are Eric Knutson, Marcus, oh. Marcus Patrick, and Julie Jensen. So now we have three new sergeants and they'll be sworn in on July 12th, or excuse me, January 12th. Uh, but really excited. Uh, we also had uh, motor officer training or testing. So we will have Jonathan Seidel. He's one of our police officers. He'll be the next motor officer. 
for our department. So he'll go to the Motor Academy in March. It's at the San Diego Sheriff's Motor Academy. Really excited about that. And then lastly, you know, obviously the holiday season this morning, the command staff, we provided a coffee cart to our staff. So we had hot bevs come out here and, and cater hot coffee this morning to all the staff. So that was a, a really good deal. We're excited to move into the holiday season, more excited to move on to 2023. So that's all I have other than happy holidays and happy new year. Great, good news. Um, when you say five more officers needed, are you saying the two that will graduate in December will take care of two? No, that's five more in addition to those. Yeah, so the, all those staffing vacancies, the, the vacancies that I mentioned are truly that, yeah. they're vacancies. Okay. So the four that we have in training and the two that we have in the police academy, those are in addition. Yeah, in addition. yeah. Okay. so we still have five officers that we're trying to hire. We have, do have some people in backgrounds that we're trying to push through there. Obviously, lateral officers would go a lot quicker than an academy officer. It would be, you know, about four, three, four months compared to a year. Um, so we, uh, we do have one lateral, uh, not a true lateral, but an academy graduate that we're looking at in background. So hopefully that'll work out. I won't mention the department that she's coming from, but um, it'll be nice to be able to get that done. That'd be great. Yeah. I'm super happy to see Marcus Patrick become sergeant. I really yeah. had a great time uh, doing the uh, ride along with him and learned so much. He was very gracious and patient with me and all my questions. <laughs> Uh, so great. Congratulations. Yeah, to I was all. very fortunate. We had eight applicants for the sergeant's uh, position and all eight uh, made the certification list. So I was able to interview all eight. It was good. Yeah. That's, That's a, high a great, great problem for a chief to have, but also a difficult problem because they're good. Huh? They're great. Yeah. Yeah. So. Wonderful. Well, terrific. yeah, two that are detectives currently, so they'll rotate into patrol and then we'll start filling the vacant sergeant positions that we have. So. Uh, what I mean by that is our traffic sergeant we haven't had filled in quite some time and also our special investigations unit sergeant we also haven't had that filled so now we'll be able to fill those missing pieces yeah congrats to the is next lieutenant is next lieutenant is next so you've got because the retirement I know because the retirement we had three sergeants retire yeah. and we had one lieutenant retire oh yeah so we filled the three sergeant positions, and now uh, I think it's going to be in January the lieutenant position will open. So hopefully, hoping to have that filled by March. Okay, lots of work to do. 2023. <laughs> yeah, here we come. All right. And um, thank you. Any questions or comments for the chief? Thank you, Chief. You're welcome. Uh, 5.3 on the agenda. Is it you mentioned that you filled the i had a question for the chief yeah yeah i had a, a question for chief sweeney um you mentioned you filled the community service officer or you made the offer for a, a the community service officer full time could you tell me just real briefly go over what is the role of the community service officer yeah absolutely so the community service officers you'll see you're rolling around they have a, a lighter blue shirt uh, they respond to mostly our, our non-suspect information reports. So vehicle break-ins, they assist with traffic control, they take traffic collision reports. They help our officers do all those things to keep our officers actually out looking for crime. Uh, so they, they do a lot of the, the busy work, if you will. Uh, they, they are really busy. They do a lot of things, but they're kind of a catch-all. They jack of all trades. They really do a lot here. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that good question. That was uh, also nice to know. Thank you. Um, so 5.3, Rick Rasmussen, Independent Police Auditor update. Hey, Rick. How's it going? Good. Good to see you. Okay. So we have gotten through 2210 cases so far. Um, so we're fully caught up on pending cases. Um, nothing of substance was noted. No audits were necessary based on the violations and the available evidence. And then 
you need me to brief the historical case. I think one more, right? That's the next one. The last one. Okay. So are you ready to just move right into the historical case review? I can. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty straightforward, pretty easy case. The matter involved an individual who was live streaming for one of the YouTube sites to, to catch a cop. And I, I don't remember the exact name. I can look it up, but uh, catch a cop losing his school. Live panel chat cop watch is what it's called. He uh, jaywalked into the median at some point. Uh, two officers drove by. He acknowledged that he flipped them off. Uh, the officers said they never saw him. It was, I think, 2.40 in the morning. Um, they did stop him uh, because he was uh, in the roadway and had um, jaywalked. Uh, he continued to film them and then made a series of complaints against the officers that upon review of the of his own video and the officer's video um, exonerated the, the officers, uh, ma making his allegations unfounded in that what he alleges the officers did, did not occur. So it's unfounded. Um, so it's a pretty straightforward. We found the investigation to be thorough, professional, and timely, and we had no recommendations on it, which is rather unusual. Yes. Um, any questions for Rick on this historical summary of this complaint? And I believe this was before officers were required to wear body cams. This was in 2019. They were wearing body cams. Oh, they were, okay. Because yeah, the video I had seen, I went to the YouTube and it's it was pretty clear. Uh, it, I mean, it was, it was a good reason why officers should have body cams because it definitely exonerated them. So uh, their own video, they, these uh, this guy's own video exonerated the officers. So kind of interesting. Um, any other questions? It's not, it's not an unusual case. <laughs> yeah, complaints happen. Thank you for uh, finishing those historical uh, complaints up over a long period. We appreciate those. And any other questions about uh, 5.4? No, we haven't had any public comments. Okay. So we have Next on the agenda, 5.5 are the quarterly report or the quarterly report from the IPA, Independent Police Officer, from July 1st, 2022 through September 30th, 2020. So uh, you all received a copy of that summary. So Rick, I'll let you go ahead and walk us through that. Rick, you're muted. There you go. Okay, I've got it called up on my computer. I'm shocked. Um, it was pretty straightforward. Um, we expanded the, um, the descriptive areas. We listed the cases that we've gone through. And I, I really, uh, I didn't have a lot. It seemed pretty straightforward. Yeah, so if it's administratively declined, that means it just doesn't meet the requirements for an audit, huh? Correct. Okay. And if, if a certain type of complaint continue to occur that didn't meet the standards for an audit, would you flag that and recommend that we audit it? Yes, asterisk. Um, if it's a traffic officer who's giving tickets and gets 
flag for rudeness repeatedly, it's going to have to be a bunch of rudeness complaints before we would even take a serious look at it because there are parts of police work that some officers are assigned to that the nature of the beast is somebody's going to be upset. But if it was, you know, a de minimis alleg allegation of some other violation and it was repetitive, we would likely recommend an audit. However, it's been our experience that in your department, that's already being done by your own folks who are sifting through and looking at it historically. So I, I'm not sure that that will arise, but we're ever vigilant, uh, but I just don't think that'll be a problem. The uh, department has got left up and running and working with Captain Nicholas, we worked through some um, minor glitches in the system and it's it's running pretty smooth right now. So we get to see everything that's in there, um, which includes historical. So I, you know, it's we're at a pretty good place right now. So I have a question about um, there's a couple of complaints that uh, number the 03 and 04 ones that were found unfounded is what the La Mesa Police Department found. They were unfounded. And the IPA finding is audit pending. Does that mean you are planning to eventually review that or? Well, in that particular case, 04, yeah. there's 176 videos. Oh. Um, and that's going to consume somewhere around 350 hours wow. just to get through the videos. So what we did, what I did in this case was we looked at a smattering of videos, I think around 10, and then compared to what the IA investigation revealed in contrast to what the uh, complainant had alleged. And it, it just didn't make any sense to burn through the IPA's entire yearly budget on one case where uh, all evidence indicated that th there was no violation. So we, and this occurred after the end of the quarter. So at the end of the quarter, it was pending, but it is no longer pending. It's, uh, it, it's been administratively declined. Okay, so it looks pretty likely that um, you would agree with the police department's findings on that. Yeah, I, I'd go even further than pretty likely. There was no evidence that we could uncover that was supportive of the allegation. Okay, thank you. And then the, the pending ones, you're waiting for La Mesa Police Department to complete their uh, investigation. Right. Okay. And I believe there's two of those. Correct. Great. And but, they but this quarter, we've resolved them. So the next quarter report, 03 and 04, will reflect administratively declined. Okay. And, and I'm looking for the other one. Okay. So, uh, and you were saying administratively declined is typically for reasons such as it's really another department or it's another uh, law enforcement agency and things like that. Yes, that's one of the primary reasons, correct. Okay, so you'll follow up on those two probably in the next report. Correct. Any other questions about the uh, third quarter report. Uh, yeah. How are we responding to the complaints? The response to the complaint is the responsibility of the police department. It's in their policy manual. Okay. Don't don't quote me, but I think they have 30 days after their resolution to notify the complainant. Yeah, we reach out to the complainant in writing. Okay. 
can let them know the final what the final decision was on the case. Thank you. Any other questions on item 5.5? Any and no public comments, Stacy? No, not at this time. And Madam Chair, what the staff looking for in the, on this item is uh, is a motion to and a second to approve the quarterly report, which will then be presented to the city council. Thank you. Do we have a motion to approve the third quarter IPA? I would move to approve. We approve the third quarter report. And do I have a second? I'll second. Mike McWilliams. All right, take a vote. Board member Walkup, how do you vote? Yes. Board member Meg Williams, how do you vote? Yes. Board member Johnson, how do you vote? Yes. Board member Dub, how do you vote? Yes. Board member Demit, how do you vote? Yes. Board member Blackman, how do you vote? Yes. Chair Castanos, how do you vote? Yes. Motion carries with all board members that are present voting yes. Um, can I vote on that as I'm well? Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Board yeah. member Tiffany, how do you vote? Yes. I'm sorry about that. Thank all you. good. <laughs> Thank you, Caitlin, and congrats on your win for uh, La Mesa Spring Valley School Board seat. It's good news. Thank you. All right. Um, so we have uh, 5.6 on the agenda is Community Police Oversight Board work plan for- Sorry, Janet. Uh, yes. Sorry to interrupt. I just, I noticed that on the agenda, there was a recommendation, recommended um, motion to ratify the IPA's recommendations from the historical report. Um, I'm not oh, sure if that's something that- That's right, thank you. Yes. You want to do. Yes, uh, can we- yeah, I guess we you, can, you can go back to okay. the item. Uh, okay. I don't know. Does that require a vote to go back? Yes. See, okay. Let's take a vote to return to item, to item 5.4 and then take a vote. Thank you for pointing that out, Carolyn. So on item 5.4, board member Walkup, how do you vote? Yes. Board member Tiffany, how do you vote? Yes. Board member Mick Williams, how do you vote? Yes. Board member Johnson, how do you vote? Yes. Board member Dove, how do you vote? Yes. Board member Dement, how do you vote? Yes. Board member Blackman, how do you vote? Yes. Chair Castanos, how do you vote? Yes. Motion carries with all board members that are present. Yes. So now you make a motion. Yes. Okay. So now we need to vote on the, uh, we need to, a motion, first of all, to uh, vote on the independent police officer historical case review that we just uh, finished a little while before. So well, do I have a motion? Last, last meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, well, did we do the ones for the, we, yes. We okay, so we did the, we just missed this one because we didn't have time to get through it. So just the final one that was reviewed today. Uh, so the historical one, yeah. let me see which number was that. Uh, doesn't have a number, but it was on page. Uh, well, in that case, it looks like there were no recommendations in this report, which is my right. my apologies. I wasn't sure if we if this motion was to encompass recommendations oh. in the last meeting as well. But we still do we still have to approve that we reviewed it, or is it only if there's recommendations? Because we did approve the recommendations at the last meeting. Uh, that were for the entire report. Mm -hmm. And there were no specific recommendations for this particular item. So what do you recommend? In that case, it seems like it isn't necessary to ratify anything because I think the way the policies set it out is that the CPOB's ratification of the recommendation is the kind of message to the police chief that you concur with that recommendation. So it seems, I mean, I think you can do it here to show that you concur with the uh, IPA's findings, but um, sure. it might not be necessary. 
Are we recommending that we approve of nothing? Uh, well, I don't think we, I don't, I think we're backing up here because it sounds like we don't need to approve this historical uh, review because there were no recommendations on it. And the only reason we'd have to approve it if there were recommendations. And we, all the recommendations from our last meeting, we did approve, but none came from this particular item from. October, this was the one dated October 28th, 2019. So since there were no recommendations, we don't have to go back and vote on it. Is that correct, Caroline? I, I think that's correct. Sorry, I, I wasn't sure what the scope of this motion would be. So that makes sense okay. in this case. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Uh, does that sound good? Yeah. It does. Okay. It's fine. Okay, great. Thank you. Appreciate all the input. Um, so the last, or 5.6, sorry, not last, but 5.6 item on the agenda is the work plan, fiscal year 2022. And Carlo, since Lynn's not here, you're probably gonna discuss this. Absolutely. So uh, chair, uh, members of the uh, oversight board, what, what staff has done is to put together an updated uh, draft 2023 work plan for your consideration. We attach the agenda, uh, the, the 22 work plan for reference and the 23 work plan with some strikeouts for certain um, activities that have been completed or perhaps were not anticipated to reoccur in 2023 with the balance of the work plan remaining largely as it was right. for 22 because many of these activities, if not all, have uh, their origin is really from the CPOB ordinance and from your ongoing mandate from the council. So we felt it was appropriate to continue those activities. This is your opportunity to review the work plan. Let us know if we've missed something. If you'd like to discuss any potential new activities for 23 that we would include into the work plan. Once the work plan is, is approved by the CPOB, then we would present it to the city council uh, in uh, February, uh, either the first or the second meeting in February. And the chair would present the work plan along with the CPOB annual report. So with that, I will uh, turn it over to the chair for additional discussion and direction to staff. So um, in, were there significant changes? I had printed out our November uh, work plan, but okay, because there are a few things that I wanna make sure we continue to do, and that's the, um, the survey. Uh, so, uh, item two on work plan item one, that is definitely in process as uh, so we're working on, we're working with a PhD student at San Diego State to um, put the survey online so it's more accessible to a greater number of people. And uh, he made a few recommendations to update it, like to put the year on uh, some of the questions regarding the May 30th, 2020, we just had May 30th and, and no year. And it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of important to have the year because it was a few years ago. Um, so anyway, just little changes like that that aren't really significant to the overall survey, but that is in process for sure. Uh, any other items that any of you notice going through this work plan? that you'd like to add or something that's missing or something that maybe feels like it might have been. I just have a question if I could ask. Quest yeah, question. Um, just number three, the internship with high school and, and or college folks. Is there ever any a time where you feel like what is presented may be inappropriate for a youth along those lines? Does that make sense? Let's say we're having a 16 year old. Am I reading that correctly? Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's number three, one. Number three. Oh, are you talking about work plan yes. item three? I'm sorry, oh. work plan. I'm sorry, work okay. plan item three. And maybe I'm misunderstanding, but. Just um, read an internship for the Mesa residents. Um, there, there was a concern about having a voting member that was that young on the board, but we we determined that if it was an intern, we could ask them, if we felt it was inappropriate, we could ask them to step out. Um, so that was the way to get the youth voice without you know 
we don't want to traumatize anybody because I think I that was, was brought up. Case. Yeah, that was brought up back in, way back when we wrote the ordinance, um, and that's why I, I know uh, at that time our council member um, Dr. Weber wanted a youth voice, and she wanted somebody on, you know, actually a voting member. Uh, but we determined that, you know, uh, the police officer at the time recommended that we maybe not have that person as a voting member. We could have a youth voice, which is Ana Fuentes is our current youth rep, uh, ages 20, I think it's 21 to, um, to 30. But the intern is somebody that we can ask to step out if need be. So and I think, you know, the chief or Rick Rasmussen could re recommend that, you know, maybe this particular item isn't appropriate. Great. Great. Just curious. Yeah. I, I, have, we, I haven't been a part of something where it came up where I can recall, but some of it's a little strange. So yeah. <laughs> just, just yeah. thinking about it. I know. You, you know, you never know <laughs> what could come up. So. Member Tiffany, have a question? Oh, yes. No, I just wanted to comment on it because I was also one of the task force members that was um, trying to push for a youth uh, member uh, being a voting member. Um, uh, the main reason for that uh, and having youth participation is that uh, young people are the one of the more common groups to have negative interactions with police. Um, and so we felt that it was important to uh, still be able to have that voice available. Uh, my other argument for this is that, yes, I understand the idea of not wanting to traumatize them, but a lot of 16 to 18 year olds are already very aware uh, or have may even personally experienced some of these things. And so uh, the idea of kind of shielding them from stuff they're already uh, well versed in, um, I think, is a, a an interesting adult perspective on what youth are experiencing. So I like the idea of having youth being able to um, speak for themselves, um, and that's why I wanted a voting member. But uh, an intern was the next best thing we could get. So, uh, and unfortunately, we haven't been able to find that. Um, so that was just my perspective on that. Yeah. That's great. Thank you, um, Caitlin. And we're still working on a an intern. And uh, I know the chief was working with a young person that I think went through the academy and expressed interest, but I don't think we've received an application yet. And then Helix, the Helix counselor also expressed that they may have somebody, but- We have an intern on the police department. Oh. Okay, I was thinking, when you mentioned that, I was thinking an intern for the CPOB, but that's for the police department. Correct. Okay. Maybe that person would like to do both. <laughs> Possibly. We can ask. I don't think it's a bad thing for the youth. If they were to experience what we've gone through over the last year and a half in building what the CPOB is and, and the relationship that we have together now, I, I think that would probably change perceptions. Yeah, I think it would because that was one thing our survey found was the youth uh, had a less positive, I guess it's a nice way to put it, uh, perspective of the police department than the adult population. And I think it's just a matter of making sure they're, you know, uh, aware of what's going on in La Mesa at least. Other comments, questions, concerns, additions? I think overall the work plan looks very nice and uh, something I think we can work with and uh, and present to city council. So it's pretty much what's listed in the ordinance. So we're staying on base there. So at this point, we need to uh, approve, review the draft and provide feedback. Do we need to approve it? If you if you're ready to approve it, I, I think it might be appropriate just to take a vote for the record and say okay. we'd like to move the work plan forward to city council. Okay. Any uh, do I have a motion to move the work plan forward to city council? Move. Okay. And I'll second that. Reverend Demint and Robert Duff. 
you want to do it. Board member Walkup, how do you vote? Yes. Board member Tiffany, how do you vote? Yes. Board member McWilliams, how do you vote? Yes. Board member Johnson, how do you vote? Yes. Board member Duff, how do you vote? Yes. Board member DeMint, how do you vote? Okay. Board member Blackman, how do you vote? Yes. Chair Castano, how do you vote? Yes. Motion carries with all board members that are present voting yes. Thank you, Stacy. Um, next item are committee reports. Uh, do we have any committees that need to give updates on their work? Yeah, mediation. Uh, okay, great. So uh, we met, uh, our last meeting was on December 7th. Uh, the Zoom uh, participants were uh, myself, uh, Caitlin, Carlo. Uh, we had uh, our whole subcommittee had previously decided to use the Pasadena model as a basis for our mediation program. Uh, both of our POA many reps had already sent their input to include in our editing that was done at that meeting. Our edits were sent to our IPA mediator, Bruce Ambrose, which I was going to say, I make sure I probably make sure of that. And the document will then continue uh, moving through the approval process after that. That's pretty much it. So when will that be brought forward? Um, oh, I guess it's needs to go. Still got to get, right? It'll go from the POA to the chief, I believe, right? We would like to have, yeah, feedback from the POA right. and the chief. Yeah. Back to us. But yeah. I, I would expect that that uh, draft mediation program would come back to you for consideration perhaps in February. Okay. And then you can provide any additional feedback and then have that approved. That has to go also to the council. Okay. Any other comment? Oh, well, this isn't an agenda item, so I guess we yeah. can't go there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Leroy. Yep. Uh, any other committee reports? I think that was it. Um, staff and board member announcements. You have an announcement. I do. I, I have a staff announcement, which is that I will be leaving the city of La Mesa. I accepted a position as city manager with the city of Signal Hill. And so my last day with the city of La Mesa is gonna be January the 5th. It was a very difficult decision uh, to transition out of the city because I feel like we've done just a, a great amount of work here and it's a really good team and staff's wonderful. I really love the, the police department as well. They've done a terrific job. So it was really difficult for me to have to consider moving on, but right now it's the best thing for me to do in my career. So I really appreciate everyone's support and collaboration uh, with the CPOB. Uh, our you know, legal counsel, Caroline and Dale, have done a terrific job helping us. Uh, certainly all of the board members, Rick and his team have been instrumental in helping us review all the policies and, and get to where we are today. So this was truly a, a collaborative effort. There was no one person that, that did everything. We all worked together. And I'm really proud of the way that everyone here uh, worked together to get us to where we are today. So. I will be leaving the city. I will be sad to, to leave you, uh, but really want to thank you and share my, my deep appreciation for everything you've done. Thank you. Do we have an interim uh, person to step into your role? Lynn will be stepping into my role on a temporary basis until the city finds a new assistant city manager. Sounds good. Well, we will definitely miss Carlo. Um, I was devastated when I heard the news. <laughs> because I wanted Carlo to stay here forever, but um, I am really happy with uh, his promotion and sounds like a great opportunity for him. So he deserves it and we need to let him go. <laughs> so, You'll be in good hands, I promise. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm happy to work with Lynn, that's for sure. Completely understandable why they were thrilled up there. I know, <laughs> I know, amen Thank to you. that. Thank you. So uh, board, other board announcements, we had two members of our CPOB when they're, uh, they ran for election, local elections. One was Patricia Dillard, our vice chair. She won the city council seat, came in first place in the election for city council. And secondly, Caitlin Tiffany, Tif Caitlin, am I saying that? Yeah, Caitlin Tiffany, I'm always Tiffany, Caitlin, Caitlin Tiffany. Uh, Caitlin won the seat for La Mesa Spring Valley School Board, and she will be able to continue on 
uh, the CPOB, where Patricia will not be able to, but Caitlin will uh, be uh, the representative for La Mesa Spring Valley School Board. So a number of us. So congratulations to Caitlin and to Patricia. Yay. And uh, yeah, go ahead, Caitlin. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just wanted to say thank you, but I'm I'm happy that I'll be around. So yeah, yeah we're happy too. You've been with us from the very beginning. You uh, you helped write the uh, ordinance, so we love having your voice in the pro in the mix. Um, and then there are uh, hopefully those of you who are uh, reapplying for your seats have put in your application. I believe it's due January sixth, Stacy. Is that right? Uh, some, something like that. I know. I'm sorry, I'm catching you off guard. But some, I believe Megan said January something. Yeah, something. Anyway, get it in as soon as possible. At, uh, first week of January, get it in. And uh, if you don't plan to reapply, let me know. I know some of you have already let me know. Uh, so we'll uh, we'll do our best to find. There are a lot of people in the community very interested in the work we do. So uh, it's just a matter of getting the word out. So uh, thank you for all. And Mike, did you have an announcement? Mike McWilliams? <laughs> did I? Well, I, I think I mentioned before that uh, that I was going to allow someone else to, to take the spot for next year, so. Yeah, and um, we, we just wanna thank you for all that you've done, uh, all you know your involvement over the past two years. Um, it's been great to have the voice of the business community and uh, you're definitely a, a important person in our La Mesa business community. So thank you for that. No, uh, thank, thank you very much. And it has been a pleasure and an honor to serve on this board. It's It's been a wonderful experience and um, I do wanna, make it available to someone else to have that. Right, thank you, Mike, I appreciate it. Um, do we have any other comments or announcements? Next meeting date. Next meeting date, the January, you're asking me to remember, let's see. So that's going to be January 18th. 18th. January 18th, uh, four o'clock is our next meeting. So put that on your calendar and we will adjourn at 4.45. Merry Christmas and happy holidays and happy new year. See you in 2023. Bye. Bye. Oh, yeah.